Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome back. Hopefully you're just enjoying and loving all the Seesaw Connect sessions. I know we've had so many amazing presenters, so many amazing sessions. If this is day one for you, welcome to Seesaw Connect. And if it's day two, just hang in there. We're, we're chugging through the rest of day two. So we're really, really excited here to be having Jason introduce things to you and kick them off. Um, just like always, please welcome yourself by sharing who you are, what your name is in the chat. Uh, welcome, Nikki, Sarah, Tamara, Megan, Vanessa. I mean, we're coming from everywhere. Ohio, Illinois, Wisconsin, Canvas. Oh, man. New York, Iowa, all over the place. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Super, super excited you're here. My name is Chris. I'm from the Seesaw team. And welcome to Using Seesaw Tools to Demonstrate Student Understanding. This is led by none other than Jason Peters. During our session, we encourage you to take notes, share your insights, and be active while learning. Remember, you get points on the leaderboard for being active during our sessions. In the top right, you can find the chat. A lot of you have already found that and introduced yourself. Use that to share and connect with others. Next to it is Q&A. Please use that to ask specific questions either for Jason or for myself to answer. You can ask questions at any time. We will do our best to answer them as time allows. There's also a tab for handouts. Jason has included a handout there that you can have an access to as soon as we go ahead and start. If you'd like to turn on closed captions, you can find that button in the top right corner. Click it, choose your preferred language, and then you're all set. Make sure to stick around to the very end for your PD certificate and for our swag giveaway. I'll pass it over to Jason to go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. Um, so like uh, Chris just said, uh, my name is Jason Peters. Um, I'm going to be talking about using Seesaw tools to demonstrate student understanding. Uh, but before I get into that, first, I'm going to, uh, these buttons have been tempting me all day. I'm going to go ahead and just click that. Sorry, it's been bothering me. I needed to do it. Um, so before we talk about that, uh, just a little bit about me. Uh, I, I am not like those of you who came into education, and that's exactly uh, where they wanted to go, how they wanted to land. Uh, originally, I was a music performance major. Um, I studied upright bass, I studied classical music and jazz. Um, and then once I got through that whole process, um, I started to teach music history because then I started diving into the history part of it and I really wanted to be an educator. Um, and I thought that the college level is where I wanted to be. So I taught music appreciation for a couple of years, realized that that's really not where I wanted to be at all. So then I went to get uh, certified as an elementary teacher. And um, I've been an elementary teacher for eight years, and I've been working in Rockford Public Schools for the last seven years. Uh, I teach now at Constance Lane. I teach fifth grade, where I'm um, a fifth grade teacher, and then I am a teacher technology support specialist. So I think I saw someone from Rockford uh, in there. So hello. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. <clears throat> so uh, why? Um, Seesaw. So I'm going to talk about my growth into the platform because at this point, while I am now a strong supporter of Seesaw, it wasn't an immediate take to the platform for me. Um, hopefully I've got some upper elementary educators who are in attendance um, that might be somewhat on the fence like I was. Um, if that's the case, hopefully it can be, you know, the little force to kind of push you over onto the other side of the fence. But don't worry, there's no spiky bits. I put lots of cushions and padding down there. So it's 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 a nice push over to the other side. So um, now early in my career, um, I tried to take every bit of information that I could from uh, my colleagues. And that would be anything from uh, classroom management uh, to any sort of platform, um, any sort of tips and tricks for any of that stuff. And um, one day I had heard people talking about Seesaw and that wasn't something that I had um, originally been brought on to. Um, I learned about you know Google Classroom, all the Google stuff, and that was all fine and well. Um, and when I had an, um, asked one of my teammates about Seesaw, uh, they had told me, oh, don't worry about that. Uh, that's mostly for kindergartners and first grade teachers. Nobody really uses it higher than second grade. So um, at the time, that's really all I needed to know because I was trying to take in as much as I could. If there's anything I didn't need, then I just didn't really worry about it. So it fell off of my radar for a while because like I said, originally it was a platform that was sold to me um, by K2 teachers as a tool mainly for K2 students. Um, however, you know, is it though? Um, obviously no, because I'm here talking about how it is in the uh, 
other side of things. So <clears throat> that's kind of where we're going to be heading. So jumping forward, um, I switched from fifth grade to third grade for a couple of years. Um, and I kept this ideology in mind because, you know, big bad fifth grade teacher to big bad third grade teacher, uh, that's K2 stuff. I didn't need to worry about it uh, until uh, my district director of technology, Susan Urum, um, had a training on Seesaw at my building one day. And I thought, all right, well, maybe I'll just give it a shot. I've got this, um, you know, I've got this training. I might as well uh, attend it. So the features all sounded intriguing, but, uh, you know, being a third grade teacher, I still kind of kept my skeptic hat on until the mention of student portfolios. Now, if you are um, someone who uses student portfolios, uh, or if you have a building that uses student portfolios, you know that they're great. Uh, they're great ways to, you know, keep track of things, keep track of goals, documentation for student learning. They're good for growth goals. They're good for uh, parent-teacher conferences. They're good for all of those things. But you know that on the other side of that uh, coin is that you are jointly responsible with elementary school students uh, to keep track of and gather all that information. So, you know, before um, my data binders looked like a recycling bin exploded inside of a two inch binder. And I'm sure a lot of you can really uh, sympathize with that. So when uh, Susan Urim had talked to me about this being a digital portfolio, I immediately went to seeing something like this to in my mind, like this. Now, this is not, you know, exactly how it's going to look, but it, the, the clean uh, aspect of it, how things are organized, they're digitally kept, they're not just some wadded up piece of paper that got shoved into a binder uh, that you have to be looking for later on. It's all right there. So this had a lot of appeal for me. Um, so that was how I kind of got my um, feet wet into the platform. However, I saw a lot more benefits with Seesaw as I moved forward. Um, I had seeing that there are a lot of creative opportunities for students to submit work. So for example, I have here video capture for projects. If you have uh, an experiment that you're working on, if there's some sort of discussion that you're trying to have in class, um, you know that you can't be everywhere at once. So if you're doing something um, with your students and there is a moment that you want to have captured uh, within small groups, you can't be there for every single one every single time. So you can use that video capture, or your students can use that video capture to really um, see uh, what it is that you want to. So you can look at it after the fact. You know, when you're also um, working on group projects as well, those are some things that you might not necessarily be able to take home because um, it's, you know, one finished product and you want to, the students typically want to take it home and show it to the grownups. Um, and this allows them to at least see it in some sort of form. Um, flexibility for students to complete work uh, in their preferred method. Um, this is going to lend into what we're going to be mainly talking about today. Um, but one of the things that um, I started to realize is once we hit remote learning, um, I had a student who did some stuff um, here and there. Uh, in general, their work was fine. We went into that full lockdown. Um, I started to see a huge spike in the amount of work that was getting turned in. And a lot of it was done with voice memos. Um, he much preferred, he had the capability to write. He had the capability of doing, you know, all kinds of things um, like I had been presenting to him, but he really preferred to, sp to speak things out. Uh, that's just kind of how he got everything out. And I'm like, oh, that's a really good way to uh, help a student um, get their thoughts out. It might not necessarily need to be typed out, they can speak it. Um, so that was really, really um, good for me. And then, like I said, with this uh, main part that we're going to be talking about today, um, seeing that uh, student choice is going to be a big component to how I use Seesaw now. And then uh, lastly, and probably the most important in some aspects, is that there's a higher percentage of buy-in from grown-ups at home. Um, my district had um, a policy they put into place recently where well, somewhat recently, where um, they said main form of communication, if you're going to be using some sort of platform, is going to be Seesaw. Uh, and I know that with, um, you know, out there, there's plenty of other um, platforms that work just as well. Um, there's things like Class Dojo, um, where you can have, you know, that classroom management part, you got the messaging, you have all that other stuff. Um, but the problem is, is that if you are a family that has multiple 
students in multiple grades. You know, one classroom does this, another classroom does this, another classroom doesn't use any of those things, they use this other thing. Uh, this got everyone all on the same page. Now, it was a kind of a rocky adoption uh, at the start, and I had some parents who were really not on board with it until it came to um, student-led conferences. And I had a grown-up who came in one day and said, all right, what's, what's my child doing? So I kind of walked them through some of the things that uh, we had on paper. And then I said, well, are you connected on Seesaw? And they said, no, I don't want to, I don't want to download another app. Um, so I said, okay, well, let me just, let me just show you. And I pulled up their portfolio and they immediately said like, this is what you're doing. You've been telling me that you do nothing all day. It's kind of, you know, like the equivalent of like, how is school today? Oh, it was fine. I did nothing. And it's like, they're doing a petting zoo thing. So it's like, it's, it gives them an opportunity to see uh, more or less in real time uh, what is going on during the school day. Um, and with the messaging, um, that's how I send uh, direct messages to uh, family members because they're not always available to uh, talk on the phone. Um, I send my newsletters out through there and they get to see the assignments. So I um, really got a huge uptick in uh, family participation um, from grownups at home. So some of the other uh, bonuses of uh, Seesaw. Now, uh, where this is going to tie into uh, demonstrating student understanding. So when we look at um, how we collect data for students, when we do uh, different assignments, activities, um, we create things, measure things in different ways, things like summative assessments, things like quizzes, things like exit slips. Seesaw is capable of doing all of these. Um, but what I'm going to be focusing on is going to be more of the exit slips. But these are all things that we have access to, which you should check out if you uh, don't already. So this is going to veer a little bit uh, away from where uh, some school districts might uh, grade things differently than others. Uh, where I teach, uh, we use standards-based grading. Um, so if we're looking at what standards-based grading is, you've got that one, which is the below standard, going all the way up to that four. Um, now, <clears throat> when you finish um, when you finish a lesson or uh, a skill, you're hoping that students are going to generally be in that three. They want that meets expectations. They're able to do it. They're able to do it consistently. They're not needing the extra support. Um, but that four that exceeds expectations, that's that next level. But the requirements to get there need that one crucial point, that crucial point being explanation. Um, <clears throat> this is a task that potentially turns any well-intentioned student's answer from this, you know, like they got it, they knocked it out of the park, the answer is right there. But the second you ask them, but how did you get there? How did you arrive at that answer? It goes from this uh, more to this. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a process to get them used to wanting to explain how they got to where they did. So this is where I'm going to be focusing on. Now with exit slips, now when you're making an activity in Seesaw, uh, this is where I generally start. So you've got uh, the activity that you have, you're going to name it, you've got your canvas, the assessment, uploading resources, link resources, notes. We're going to use the creative canvas, or I'm going to show you my boilerplate template. Uh, so we're going to start off with the creative canvas, and I'm going to kind of walk myself through um, creating an activity. So starting just there really quick, I'm just going to back up. Um, we are looking at this menu right here, uh, which is where we're going to build out some of the other things that I like to use. I should have said something about this sooner. I was super uh, pleased to see that Chris Schreiner was uh, the person presenting uh, for me because he's one of my Seesaw heroes. Uh, I took a course that he facilitated uh, a number of years ago, and I would, this is going to be my shout out to him at this point. One of the biggest tips that I learned in making a seesaw activity, because admittedly, my uh, my seesaw activities that I had been using uh, when I first got started, not very good at all, like borderline awful. Um, and one of the things that he put out there was that um, his activities, 
he always had some sort of color background change. Uh, and I'm like, oh, I don't really think about it that way. Because I, me, myself, I tend to be kind of bland in general in terms of my styling for things. Uh, I don't try to make things super fancy. But he said um, he had suggested changing background colors. And it's, it's so unbelievably true. The second I started adding some sort of color background, uh, the participation um, in these activities just skyrocketed. Uh, so just a, a pro tip for you. Um, so when I'm making my activity, change the background. Um, I like to use the rounded edged squares. Um, I don't know, you can use the whatever shape you like to, but I like to use this as kind of a landing spot for where the activity you're going to be using is uh, going to go. So what I'm going to be looking at here, so now that I've got my shape, uh, for where I want to put the activity that I want them to respond to. Uh, we have this up here where we have our questions, we have that AI assistant, and we have frames. Um, frames is what I'm going to be looking at uh, with all of you um, as we're moving forward from here. So I've got frames, and you've got all these different options. Um, I just started off with a label, so that just gives them the, the option to do a type response. But let's say you have an activity that you wanted to create that you wanted to give them more options. Well, once you click on the menu for that, you can add in retroactively the different types of frames that you want them to have. So this gives them the opportunity to respond to something um, with how are they most feel comfortable. Um, and you, by and large, when I do um, exit slips, um, I like to give them these three options because I have some students that while they're okay with sharing things um, verbally, they also want to do that screen record because it also helps them walk through the steps. Um, some of them don't like to do the recording at all. They, like, they just prefer to type and that's totally fine too. Um, however, uh, what we're going to be looking at is going to be uh, my students recording. Um, because I think that really, once they start to verbalize what it is they're trying to say when they're explaining their learning rather than, to, than just typing it, to me, it gives them a little bit more confidence. So <clears throat> we have those three options. And I'm going to go from here. I kind of already spoke about that a little bit. So I've got the speaker, the uh, screen record, and then typing. Now where this is going to take us I, I i will tell you i'm speaking um from what you're going to see is going to be from a bit of a, a math heavy perspective for my team um i do a lot of the planning for math so i'm working with uh a lot of math stuff and I, this is not to say that this is exclusively um a math only thing you can use this for however you see fit um, but we're going to be looking at four different student examples um, from this past year. Now, keep in mind, this is going to be towards, you know, the middle of spring. So what you're hearing is not necessarily going to um, be what you're going to get right off the bat. So it needs a little bit of coaching. So I'm going to go ahead and switch some tabs really quick. Um, I don't think there's going to be... Uh, this. This is a maybe volume warning for all of you. Uh, I can't really control the volume that's coming out from this. Uh, and I know that some of the students that kind of talk pretty close to the Chromebook. So just, just be aware. So if you have headphones in, maybe just kind of like take them out just a little tiny bit uh, so you can determine uh, what you need. So switch to this tab. And this is... Um, a student that we're going to go ahead and listen to their explanation as to how they got their answer. I really don't know how I got the answer. I just, uh, I just kind of, not, not I guess, but like, I, I don't know how this makes it. So, I just guess. Okay. Uh, can you quickly, just to make sure that, uh, I, I did that. I, I saw some reaction. Can you give me some sort of reaction? So I know that you heard the audio. Okay. Okay, I think I got some people responding. Perfect, thank you. Um, all right, so this is another one of the features that Seesaw has where you can make a multiple choice assessment. Um, admittedly, this exit slip, kind of tough because you had all that apply. I even highlighted it and said, select all that apply. Um, so even at first glance, this is kind of tough. Now, um, he didn't get them right. He got one of them right out of the two uh, options. Um, but what does that really mean? I mean, he did eventually fess up to the fact that, uh, yeah, he did He did kind of guess. Um, so out of five choices, he got one of them right. Um, so 
what we're going to do with this, what can we do with this? What does this information actually give us? Because if we just had the multiple choice uh, option and that was it, we didn't have any sort of explanation. It's like, well, maybe he just got confused because again, like I said, this was kind of con of a confusing exit slip if you're not um, watching the numbers and reading the instructions. Um, but given the fact that he kind of spun his tires a little bit uh, when choosing and when explaining, uh, this is probably something that I would want to revisit with that student, kind of have them in that lower group that not quite meeting expectations uh, because we're not hit, we're not using any of the vocabulary that I've tried to um, impress on them. They're not really answering the question in the right way. And they're just kind of uh, stalling more or less. So just thinking about what's that, what that is going to do for us. Um, and then moving forward, let's go ahead and switch to student two. Now these are going to be different exit slips from what you saw. So I'm going to switch over here. Okay, so for the tenth, the answer is going to be um twenty three and five tenths because. Um, because, um, I'm trying to think, you go to the hundredth place, no, yeah, you go to the hundredth place, and you round it down, because it's only, because it's four, because if it's five or more, you raise the score or a list, you give it a rest or something like that. And therefore, this one, this one is 23.550 because you, you round it from the hundreds place. So you go to the four to the six and it's five or more, so you have to round to the nearest hundred. So you get rid of the um six and you put a zero there because it's a sense. Then you you had the four at the beginning. You put the what's the name there and you got five. So there you go. So there you go. <laughs> uh, sorry, I this was an awesome group that I had this year. Uh, a lot of them were really good sports when it came to recording these things. Now, I didn't do this just for this presentation, um, but uh, I picked this example because this also ties into one of the other benefits that I gained uh, in using Seesaw um, with uh, grownups at home because uh, this student's parent was so on top of things. They were the first person connected. They are the first person reading my newsletter when they get sent out over the weekend. They are the first person to respond to things. And they're constantly checking in on what the student is doing. Um, so for me, knowing that and knowing that the student, just to kind of give you a little bit more insight to the student, um, they are very quick to get frustrated. They're very quick to get. Um, angry when they get to something and they can't really fully verbalize it. Um, so the fact that uh, she was able to push through this and then actually give me the right answer that we were looking for um, and also using, I can't, I can't take credit for the five or more raises. That wasn't me. So, but she, but she's showing that she's drawing on that previous knowledge that she gained um, from the year before or even the year before that. Um, so with, Seeing this exit slip, what I would do with it, one, uh, and tying this back to home, uh, I can give that feedback, which if you don't give the feedback on activities, you need to, because they do read it, uh, or if you record it, which you can do, they also listen to it. So I can give that um, reinforcement for her, saying, like, amazing job. Like, I, really, I really like how you stuck with it. I like how you got to the answer the right way. You're using the vocab. Um, all that is great. I can then also make a point to share that with home so that her grown up can see it and say like, oh, this is something that you've been working on in class. You might've been struggling with it and you're getting it. Amazing. Now, what this does for me besides, um, you know, keeping that line of communication with home and with the student, where I'm going to use this sort of information is that she did get the answer correct. 
that's what we're looking for. Um, but knowing how I know that she arrived at it and still being a little bit rocky, uh, I would still put her like in that bubble group, that kind of like two to three bubble group where they're quite, they're, they're kind of there, but you don't want to give them something that's going to overwhelm them. Cause like I said, the student got uh, frustrated easily once they were met with some sort of, you know, resistance with something. So that's something that would inform me and in how I'm going to make that group with that student. All right. Student three. Twenty-three point five four six two two rounded to the nearest tenth. Since anything that's five and up rounds up, it would be twenty-three and six tenths. Okay. First one. Twenty three point five four six rounded to the nearest hundredth would be since anything underneath five and since anything underneath five rounds down and fours underneath five, it would be twenty three point three hundredths. Okay, so uh a Bit more dissecting with the student. Um, it's not simply a matter with the student with just getting the answer wrong. There's bits you can take out that she is understanding. Um, she's showing some understanding of some of the parts, uh, but as a whole, you know, I'd say um, the the use of the vocabulary not quite there. One of the big things that uh, they don't like is when I harp on them for using the place value vocabulary. So it's not. 23.546 is 23 and 546 thousandths. You gotta add that THS onto the end. So um, knowing that she's not using that, that kind of gives me an indication of one, we need to go back and revisit the vocabulary. Two, uh, when we're listening to both answers, yeah, you could argue that she was a little bit distracted, especially in that first example with that other student. Um, but uh, given how the second answer went, um, I would still say that that would be an informing thing for me to want to work with her on that not quite approaching yet. So one, we want to build that foundation of the vocabulary. Two, we want to build uh, a stronger foundation of the rounding process. Uh, and then also start getting in the explanation as we start to boost things up. Um, so student three, let's move on to student four. Now, before I share with you, uh, what's going on with student four. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at what um, was put in here. Now, at first glance, I mean, you've seen this uh, exit slip for the last three student example, or last two student examples. Um, so you can kind of know how I lay things out and what we're um, looking for as far as an answer. We've got a response that she recorded. We have uh, an explanation that's over here but we don't have an answer for up here. And when we kind of look at the explanation as what was typed, um, there, there's some things that we want to try to um, see a bit more of. So just really quick, uh, think to yourselves, how would you have graded this if you were to give it some sort of an answer, just first glance um, in terms of like that standards based grading, like a one, two, three, or four. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and listen to the explanation. The number would go down because the hundred spills is four, so that twelve to twenty three and five tenths. Okay, so uh, I picked this student because. Um, more than anything else, more than, you know, growth goals, um, data, assignment scores, groupings, there's still that bigger picture of who is the one submitting this. It is a student. It is a person. This was one of my ESL students, and she was one of the hardest working students that I've ever had. Um, she, we have a, a, a at my school, we have a pretty considerable um, Swahili population, and she was uh, someone who 
did not speak Swahili, but still was uh, someone whose family had immigrated over here from Africa. So she was kind of at odds with um, with the gen ed students um, because there's that language barrier. She didn't quite fit in entirely with the Swahili speaking students. So um, that communication part is pretty big. And seeing this, um, you know, it she she had the stuff that you're looking for. Um, and if anything, um, keeping me honest as a uh, instructor, as someone who um, works with students, builds these activities, I, it might have been pretty unclear for her. I gave the instructions, I typed them out on the seesaw activity, um, and sh her focus might have been just on this one. She might have even seen this one. She saw the text box over here or the response box. Like, all right, well, I'm going to record it and then I'm going to verbalize it. So that's um, that's where that's coming from. And when you talk to her, this is something that she uh, really did understand. So where this would uh, inform my instruction for this student. Um, she's hitting the marks where she needs to. It just might not be the way that you would have assumed that it was coming from. Um, so I would probably put them in that bubble group also like that I had with student two um, because they're there. We're using the vocabulary in the right way. The process is correct, uh, but we just need to kind of tighten up a few things to build more confidence. So back from uh, the seesaw examples. Um, some takeaways from this. Keep it simple. I mean, like you you saw uh, my activities. They were not full of razzle or dazzle, uh, let alone razzle-dazzle. So just keep it simple. Keep it simple to start with. Um, and understand that students will be uncomfortable at first, but the more that they practice with it, the more comfortable they're going to become. All four of those examples, those were coming from mid-spring. Um, so they've already gotten used to me harping on them since like, I don't know, November, December, like, hey, we're going to do things a little bit differently. I know that I gave you the choice, but now you actually have to record yourselves because I want to hear how you're talking through this. Um, so prep them on it. Start early. Start uh, do it early, do it often to make it a class norm um, for your students, because uh, you can, like I said, this is this was just me talking about um, math. Uh, with the things that I had created for my team. Um, but you can use this in any um, sort of context that you see fit in that explanation part. It's 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 really, really helpful uh, to see how um, they get there. And once they do get there, once they do get more comfortable saying it, um, that helps them talk shop uh, amongst themselves. Not that they're going to uh, go hang out at recess and uh, start to use all that math vocabulary and uh, debrief themselves from how the math lesson went. But it, it helps foster that discussion in the classroom as well. Um, and just just a general um, confidence booster. So uh, that's pretty much where I'm using Seesaw nowadays. Um, I know that we're getting into the beginning of August, so we're getting closer than others uh, to the beginning of the school year. So thank you guys for your time. I uh, really appreciate all of you for being here. Um, and yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jason. Such amazing insights. I have one question that I'm actually going to pop up onto the full screen here. It's a longer question and there's a couple things to unpack here, um, but I'd love for you to just kind of answer this first part. Like, do you use these exit slips every day in your classroom? If you don't, how often do you use them? Um, I use them a few times a week. Um, it's with the curriculum that we're using as again, coming from a math perspective, um, the lessons that I have, they kind of have exit slips that lend themselves to being easily made or transferable onto Seesaw, but um, they don't always have to necessarily be. Uh, if it's, you know, uh, if you want to get where they are at the beginning, do like a midpoint thing. Um, like I said, I, I kind of do mine a few, a few times a week where they are going to be recording themselves. Like we need to end again, like I said, when you do it enough, uh, that kind of helps, um, it helps it become less of just like a thing that they have to do and just like, all right, well, we just did the lesson. I got to do this. Then I do my independent work. Absolutely. For sure. And I'll ask kind of the second part of the question. I'll just reframe it a little bit. Um, in general, how, you know, you talked about how Seesaw has really made a home in your classroom. How often are your students contributing to Seesaw, you know, whether it's through this exit slip or whether it's through something else, like how often are your fifth graders contributing into their journal? Uh, for my class daily. Awesome. And can you share more about like 
what kind of things they are contributing just so we can share some perspective with people? Sure. I mean, um, if, if like, um, like with that unique capture, um, for videos, if, if they're trying to capture um, like group work, they can take videos of it. Uh, if it's morning work, um, there's some things that I have built in there. Um, any sort of lines of questioning, any sort of uh, things that are kind of housed in there as kind of a launching pad onto other platforms. Like I know, um, actually I think Chris, you've used it before and I've, I've used your template a few times for um, choice boards. Uh, so using it in that kind of a way as well. Awesome. So fantastic. Love to hear your journey within Seesaw and love to hear kind of the, the point you've gotten to where you're using it really to make instructional decisions. I think uh, that that's such a powerful space to be in and one that, you know, not only empowers you, but it empowers your students, it empowers your families, uh, keeps everybody on board with that as well. We're going to close down our session here today. We hope you enjoyed it. Your PD certificate will be emailed to you. All sessions will also be available on demand starting August 4th. So just give us a couple days here to wrap up the conference, but then you'll be able to come back and review all these. Watch them again if you want to. If you have time between now and the next session, which you got a few minutes, you can visit the networking tab, connect with other people from around the world. You can earn points in the leaderboard uh, for doing just that. We appreciate you being here, being a part of Seesaw Connect 2024. Now we're going to give away our prize packs here. Uh, if you haven't participated in this yet, we're going to spin this spinner. It's going to pick two winners that we'll give our prize pack to. Our lucky winners will be emailing you later. Uh, so just know that if you're one of these lucky winners, which they are Brenda and uh, Javiera, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, uh, but we're going to be reaching out to both of you later via email just to get you your prize packs, uh, get you some amazing gifts as well. Uh, before you head to your next session, there will be just a one question survey that'll pop up. We would love to just get your perspective on that. Uh, it just helps us to make a better conference for you moving forward. But special thank you to Jason for being here. Thank you, teachers, for being here before back to school. We hope that you have a wonderful year.